Church of TFCC, and we're live at the Rutland Centre today with Andrew Salter, who's going to talk us through the next part of our spin bowling series. He's going to go through some of his basic grips. So, Sol, thanks for joining us again today, much appreciated. So, I just want to talk today to the guys about your basic grip, how that looks, what the fundamentals of that are, and any potential then variations you might use depending on what types of balls you bowl. So, really, mate. I guess it's over to you and just explain a little bit about how you go about your grip and, and your training. Yeah. So, first things first, um, it's really important that if you find something that's comfortable and works for you, not to change it or try too much stuff, because I think I went through a stage where I was like, oh, if I support my thumb here, can I get a bit more revs on it? Can I grip it a bit harder? Can I change this? Can I change that? And actually, just led to just being a bit frustrated, a bit inconsistent. And it turned out I could get better action on the ball by focusing on hip drive. So I wouldn't say the, the grip is like the be all and end all. Just find something that naturally fits uh, comfortable for you. I, I can't remember a time I've done a particular session or session where I'm like, right, I'm just going to focus on the grip. It's something if it feels good and, and, it's, and your scene presentation is working well, work with it, groove it. Um, so you said, if you, if you are undercutting, like you know Tom, it's not a case of always assessing the grip. Check the whole package. Are you in a good place? Is your alignment good at the crease? If those things are, are, are all aligned and you're still not quite in getting the seam as tall as you'd like, maybe have a look at it, but don't you know, jump straight into, oh, I, I want to bowl over the top, I'm just going to look at my seam. Because you might have a lovely you know, grip and seam presentation, but something else might be letting you down, you might be crossing over, etc. So consider the whole package um, and, and, and then, you know. Like Just looking at your grip there, I mean, what's interesting about that, if you don't mind, pitch yeah. it up, is you see a lot of younger and experienced coaches and they'll do sessions on grips. And I think what you're saying there is actually, let's incorporate that into the, the session itself. So let's let's have that as a theme maybe, yeah. but in the session, you know, have, have half an iron but actually let's get the session going and that the grip is something that, that fits into everything else. So that's interesting. Just show us that it's really interesting how just how wide your limbs are for some of the guys that perhaps don't get to see that quite Yeah, so I'll try and show you a couple of angles and again now I just don't think about it. It's one of those things you just grab a ball. <laughs> I actually when I bowl I end up putting the ball into my hand when I'm like halfway running up. As the grip should be. Like you know I'm just like ah oh, and then it just fits in there. So I'm trying not to think about it too much. But it's sort of that's how, that's how it is, quite a big grip. Um, some different coaches have tried to say, oh, you know, you can play around with your pace by widening it for a bit slower, closing it for a bit quicker. I actually find it really tough to change my stop position because that, for me, feels comfortable. That's where I get my control from. I don't want to play around with that too much. So your stop position there. Yeah, so that's how it sits. Middle finger, index finger, across the seam, horizontal to it. And, and, then, the and then the thumb just naturally comes this side of the ball and it's quite supporting. It's not, some bowlers, I uh, think you've seen like line and stuff, yeah. they'll actually push their thumb like around that way. Yeah. And it sort of like comes out like that. It's just not for me, I've tried these sort of things. Um, thumb off the ball, some bowls. Yeah, it, 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 it's one of those things. So again, go back to what feels comfortable. Actually do some stuff where you just put a ball in your hand. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna bowl an off spinner. And then like, you know, okay, is, do you need to maybe change where that ball fits in your hand. Rather than changing like the, I think it was dexterity compared to essentially, just to throw out there, but you know, it's just, you know, maybe change the ball seam position in your hand, but don't go trying to like play around with the ball. And I think I've got pretty wonky fingers anyway, but it just, for me, that's how it fits and it feels comfortable. Um, and that's, you said, red ball cricket, not a lot is gonna change from there in, in your spell. You're gonna stick there for 95% of your spell. Okay, so that's interesting. Can we bring the white ball in, guys? Is that alright? Okay, so talk about red ball cricket. Yep. White ball cricket. Does the grip change, variations? Which variations you like to use more in your white ball? And how does that look to the guys that are joining today? Yeah, so massively so. Um, the biggest one, let's just start off with, is you get chucked the ball, the ball of first over. Um, this, ha this is becoming a lot more and more apparent in, in, in T20 cricket, especially to bowl first over as a spinner. You can get in and out, and you know, it, it, it does a, you know, you, you can do a great job like that. So, with that said, the ball 
tends to have a bit of a slippery shine on it when it's new. So I like to hold the seam. Same, same thing position, but rather than the seam coming this way, you turn it completely that way. So the, the seam is coming sort of horizontally, if you, if you want to call that very clear. So that's from the on. Yeah. As a pattern, you'd be looking at getting almost. Yeah, you'd you probably imagine I'm going to push the yeah. seam down. But, but for me, when the, when the ball is slippy, I can really grip that seam and then just come over the ball that way. So again, first over, that ball, when you feel it, it's like, oh, this feels like a bar of soap. So you can just go like that, you can come over the ball. It's not gonna get big drift because you're not standing the seam up to get that dip and drift. So it's gonna be quite a flat trajectory, come over the top, wicket to wicket. For me, that's a quite a uh, consistent way of achieving that. So, so that'd be my change up. Again, try that. This is something that's come into my game the last two seasons, two, three seasons, you know, over the course of, I don't know, uh, eight uh, or so years at Glamorgan. So it's something that I would encourage, just try it. Try these different feelings. You don't have to change your how you grip a ball. Just move that ball around. How does the ball react? Is the trajectory flatter? Is it slower? It's, it's, it's good skills to... We spoke uh, about in a previous chat that we had one of our uh, webinars that we ran, in about, you talked about potentially getting the balls to kiss on the service and you know the value in a way of sometimes undercutting if you can see on that platform. Yeah. That's something that you I mean how would you would you go about that? Is that more release position rather than grip? Yeah, it, again it is a field thing. Um, but you don't want to really bowl two balls the same in T twenty figure, especially not three, maybe you could double bluff. But you know, every single ball you're trying to be one step ahead. You don't want to give the batsman a chance to, to use their feet, get under it. So if you're standing the seam up like this, naturally the ball comes up, comes down. It's lovely and full-day cricket. That's, you know, that's what we love to see. T20 cricket, it's really hard to keep the trajectory flat when you've got your stock seam because naturally it wants to go up and down. And that gives a batsman a chance to use his feet and he can get underneath it. So, so that's a, a good change up. But for me, if I do use my stock, it's to go take the pace completely off. That's where I feel I can really control my arm speed and it come out of hand. So I'll, I'll go stop grip to then bowl a slower ball. Um, so that probably then leads me on to my other arm ball or change up. Which is a split finger. Yeah. Again, here's the, you know, the, my tip, my, my grip doesn't change. I've gone from stop to sort of crossing like that. And then my arm ball is this, That's great. God, just the, looking the at seam that in between my hands. This close as well, so it's really, yeah. it's really able to see. You're right, the grip doesn't change at all. Where yeah. the ball sits in your grip changes, the actual grip doesn't change. And I think that leads nicely onto one of the previous filming sessions that we did yeah. about you using potential other other outcome based um, variables, yeah. you know, like uh, width of the crease, where you're marbling, where your release point is, yeah. without changing the basic fundamentals of your action, which I think is fascinating really. It's something that, and a great insight really. Yeah, and like every spinner wants success and you don't want to be getting hit for boundaries. And sometimes you can go searching for that a little bit. You, you, you watch other players do different things and, oh, that might work, I might try this, I might try that. But if you go too far down that route, you might, you know, you, you might get a bit frustrated not getting the results, so. Try and keep, you know, your, your consistent things as, consistent as possible and for me that is how the ball sits in my hand. If I move a ball around and I can play around some stuff, it's a T20 game, there's 30,000 people watching. At the back of your mark you don't want to be going, oh, how do I hold the ball again? Like, it's just, there it is, I, I've done this before, you, you, you become a bit more instinctive with it. So you're not just fine before we wrap things up, just from a batter's point of view, you're not overly protective of what they get to see? No, uh, mainly because because the, the way I run in a bowl and then, like that grip on the ball, because that's the same, it's quite hard to see, you know, from the back that that's not going to be that delivery. That's not going to be, you know, the last point is if I come down as an arm ball that way, or if it's there to there to come over that way. It's very subtle, but they're two completely different. Like a split finger can come out like a slow wobbler, where gripping it that way, coming over the top is like a flat at the pad. So. It's little changes my end which make a big difference and we spoke about this making sure the variations are big 
you're slow on the slow and you're fast on the fast. I, I, I've tried to work on making that gap bigger so that people don't adjust as easily. And relying on, like you say, what you can control there, yeah. but combine that with some natural variation, yeah. you know, you can see potentially a real variable. So, finally, so one key thing for grip. Um, young spinner, teenage spinner, one thing for you, most important. Yeah, I, I would say do what's comfortable. Um, Literally, put the ball in your hand as if you're going to spin it. Don't look at the ball, and then look at it up and go, oh, that's how I hold the ball. Like, e even talking to you today, I have to put it in my hand to think how I do it. I don't look at the ball and go, okay, that's how I want to hold it. So, so get it comfortable, and then work from there. So, you've been a great guest today on the next part of our spin bowling series. Thanks ever so much. Guys, that was Spin Bowling Grips with Andrew Salter from Morgan. So, thanks a lot for your time. Too. Thanks.